The case pertaining to the abduction of journalist Pragit Eknaligore was taken up before the Homagama Magistrates Court today. Journalist Pragit Eknaligore was reported missing on the 24th of January 2010. I requested the court to address the issue where certain officials are influencing the first and second suspects. The Honorable Magistrate rejected this request. Meanwhile, many parties expressed their views on the abduction and assault of journalist Keith Noir following the arrest of five army intelligence personnel in connection with the incident. Were journalists suppressed during your government under the guise of war? No, I completely reject that. The members of the army intelligence have no need to abduct journalists. Isn't it too soon to say that they are members of the army intelligence? Seven years have passed since I travelled hundreds of miles and it's almost nearing eight years. Only I know the fear that I feel when I call to memory the incident where I was abducted and tortured. I think it's a feeling that only a person who was abducted and tortured like that could put into words. This incident has left me partially handicapped. My leg is being treated. I can only stand with the help of steel supports. During this time of winter, the steel gets so cold that I can't bear it and it causes me so much of physical pain. How can we come and live freely in this country when these criminals are still at large? I can tell you how my leg was broken. They kept my leg on a log and broke it from the ankle. After that, I was hospitalized for 29 days. I was walking on crutches for another nine months. This is clearly an act to suppress the media carried out by the Rajpaksa family. This government of good governance can only do right by the people who gave them this mandate by meeting out justice to the political leaders who contributed towards suppressing the media. There was talk about Gotabi Rajpaksa being the main person involved in this. Certain evidence that links him with these incidents are also coming into light, but it is clear that the investigations into these matters are not progressing the way people expect it to. We saw a few months ago the Inspector General got a call asking him to bend the law. We saw the Inspector General of Police stooping down and giving an okay to bend the law. If the Minister of Law and Order Sagal Ratnayaka was not on the other side of that phone call, we urged the government to reveal who exactly was on the other side of the call, but the government has failed to respond. The Inspector General cannot bend the law without the consent of the Minister of Law and Order and other high-ranking politicians. You cannot evade arresting those who have been accused of this. The powerful persons of this country are trying to hide behind the guise of good governance and protect their allies and work together with the corrupt businessmen who had forged deals with the previous government.